Trees, what's not to like? They help make the oxygen we breathe, boost our mental health, provide habitat for wildlife and give us shade on a hot day. Not only that, they're great for the climate, absorbing and storing carbon dioxide, one of the main greenhouse gases causing the earth to heat up. So, in 2019, when scientists produced this report, it got people talking. It said planting billions of trees around the world could be one of the biggest and cheapest ways of taking CO2 out of the atmosphere to tackle the climate crisis. So is planting more trees the best answer to climate change, or is there more to it? Nations, companies and cities are now looking at different ways to step up action on climate change, and planting more trees is proving pretty popular. Celebrities, oil companies, airlines, politicians, conservative and liberal, like the idea, and it makes for good photos. Even President Trump, who once described climate change as a hoax, says he's on board with it. The United States will join One Trillion Trees initiative. In fact, Republican lawmakers recently proposed a bill where the US would plant more than three billion trees each year for the next three decades. Pakistan has plans to plant 10 billion trees. China says it's already planted more than 35 billion since the 1990s. And last year, Ethiopia planted a record-breaking 350 million in just one day. Best of all, it's something we can pretty much all get involved with. So, how many trees would it take? Scientists at the Crowther Lab calculated the world has enough room to grow about 1.2 trillion more trees, which would add new forests of almost 1 billion hectares, an area about the size of the United States. Doing that could suck up about two-thirds of planet warming emissions from human activity, but it would take 50 to 100 years to achieve because trees need time to grow. So what are we waiting for? In many cases, someone already owns the land where we could plant these new trees but they might want to use it in a different way, like grazing cattle and sheep, or installing solar panels or wind turbines to make clean energy. Others might want to grow crops to feed the growing population, which is estimated to increase by two billion people over the next 30 years. Planting trees on land that might be used for farming could lead to rising levels of hunger and worsening battles over people's rights to land, including that belonging to indigenous groups. It's not as, as kind of black and white or binary as saying, you know, we should put a farm here and a forest there. Many of our activities are agroforestry, rotation, harvest forestry, for example, that can deliver on economic prosperity and, and food production and also climate mitigation. Also, planting a sapling doesn't guarantee a big carbon absorbing tree that actually grows and survives for decades. When countries and organisations plant thousands or even millions of trees, not all of them get enough care and protection to survive. In some cases, more trees in the wrong spots can even fuel this. Changes in our climate are creating warmer, drier conditions, hiking the risk of raging wildfires, as we've seen in Australia and North America. But while we talk about planting more trees, millions are being cut down for fuel, development projects and more farmland. The world lost more than 26 million hectares of trees, an area the size of Britain, each year from 2014 to 2018. Should we not focus on saving these first? The most valuable trees for curbing climate change and protecting nature are the world's remaining big rainforests in tropical regions, but they're disappearing fast. Take the biggest of them all, Brazil's Amazon. Last year saw its highest rate of deforestation in over a decade. Seen what happens when those ecosystems are degraded or destroyed through logging and fires in the Amazon or the fires that we've seen recently in Australia. It shows us just how important it is that we preserve those valuable ecosystems we have and then we look to restore and reconnect existing ecosystems and it then expand them. While trees are important, what also needs addressing is the initial source of carbon pollution, emissions from burning fossil fuels, because those need to be brought down close to zero. So now some fossil fuel companies are supporting nature-based solutions to climate change, including tree planting. Shell pledged to plant more than 5 million trees over the next 12 years in the Netherlands, while Italian oil and gas company Eni said they'd plant 20 million acres of trees in Africa. But critics say while this is positive, tree planting isn't a replacement for cutting emissions. This is increasingly showing us that the earth is warming even faster than we thought, so we need all the solutions that we can throw at the climate crisis. And it's absolutely essential that we very rapidly decarbonise our economies and eliminate fossil fuels from our systems. Solutions from nature should not replace that, they should be additional to that. So if tree planting alone isn't the answer, what is? 
I think where we need to be a little bit careful is assuming that trees or, or any one solution, not just to pick on trees, is some kind of panacea where it'll, it'll resolve you know, all the problems. This is a multifaceted, multi-decadal, multi-policy uh, solution that's needed and, and trees can certainly play their role. To effectively combat climate change, we're going to need to do it all. Protecting existing forests, plant new trees, replace fossil fuels with renewable energy and make our own behaviour and our economy greener.